Hello everybody and welcome to Friday and chapter 2 of Fallout Equestria. Let us begin. Chapter 2 Equestrian Wasteland What world do you live in? Out here in the real world? Blood flows, little pony. Blood flows. Nothingness. My first several seconds outside, I had were heart burning eternity, the hoof pounding terror. The story is have been right. All that was outside is a great black nothingness that surrounded me, suffocating. King, if I had been able to draw a breath, I would have screamed. Then my eyes started to ah, sorry about that. And my eyes started to adjust to the darkness. I began to calm, gasping, feeling weak. And not just a little foolish. In my defense, I've never expected experienced night before. Not really. Sure, I'd always turned off the lights before curling up in bed, but the darkness was small, confined to my little room, and there was always the glow of the of from under the door. The hall lights of the stable too were eternal. This was different. A cold air, quite unlike anything within the stable. Tickled my coat and chilled my skin beneath. It bore smells that were dank and rotting, dusty and alien. I could hear the sounds of the, the night insects, creaking of wood and far off slu sloshing. But I was struck more by what I, I couldn't hear the constant low hum of the stable generators ever present. High wine of the lights were gone. So powerful, ill in their absence, that I first mistook the outside as silent. I could I'd feel the dirt and broken stone beneath my hooves, so unlike the smooth, sterile floors I had trotted on, on all my life. And though I could not search much for, could not see much for, for much or far, I could see further than I had seen before, and there were no walls. To mark the end of the room, I was standing, to, I was staring into a horizontal abyss that stretched out uh, for me in every direction. An entirely new panic began to set a form within me. My hind legs went out from under me, and I sat stunned. I turned to gaze to the ground, deeply breathing deeply, he thanking it not only for holding me up but for or giving me a visual endpoint. And that. And I made the mistake of looking up at the sky and the absolute endless upness that sent my head spinning and my stomach lurching. Great masses of clouds rolled over most of the sky, but the, there were gaps through which a soft light poured through the as I could see the other one out forever. Instantly I thought of the clouds oh, as a great net made to catch me if I, were, if I fell from the earth into the in the and into the yawning gulf above, but it, if I stepped through the holes, I would it'd just fall for, up forever. That'd be interesting to fall up or fall out. No, it doesn't work. I clenched my eyes shut and tried to keep from vomiting. The fear and queasiness was intense but passing. Once my facilities returned, I began to notice. As those things that had escaped my initial panic. The surrounding terrain was becoming evident. The world around me was not, did not st stretch out evenly. The ground heaved and rolled, hills creeping towards mountains, the earth punctured by uh, thrusting black figures of long dead trees. Along hilltops, I could see a swaying in leaf outed bl branches of healthier woods. But the li living trees near the stable were few and scattered, few scattered and sickly. Second, I noticed that my pip buck was flashing in with a host of alerts. A map marker was already beginning to do. The map marker was already beginning to do its work. I on my new unfamiliar surroundings, and to my surprise, it already pulled the label from either from the ether. Sweet apple acres. Turning around and begin and to get my bearings, my eyes were dropped onto a large hollow husk of what I assumed to be once a magnificent house. 
Now it creaked and swayed in the breeze as it threatened to collapse. Looking at my pit book again, I noticed that it was picking up several radio transmissions. The radio broadcast from Staple 2 was dark, but the new station was had taken its place. My heart looked for it was the first indication there might be a, a pony life out here after all. I nudged my pit book to start by playing the first station that was on the list. Still sealed up. There's no way inside, my son. He ate one of those apples from the stand apple trees through the stable, and now he's terribly sick, too sick to move. We fold up in, in the chisholm near the old memorial. We're running out of food and medical supplies. Please, if any pony he hears this, please help. Message repeats. Hello? Is there any pony out there? Please, we need help. I was bringing my family to the stable up near us three apple acres when we, we were attacked by raiders. Only my son and I survived. We made it to the stable, but it's still sealed up. There's no way inside. My son, he ate one of those apples from the damned apple trees near the stable. Now he's terribly sick, too sick to move. We hold up in the chister near the old memorial. We're running out of food and medical supplies. Please, if any pony hears this, help us. Message repeats. Hello? The voice was filled with terrible over resignation, as if the pony had given up hope of we're just going through the motions. Shaken, I turned it off. I didn't think I could hear it. I, I could bear to hear it again. That is, when I, I noticed a soft tickling from my pit buck. Checking over, I discovered that, uh, that it's a radiation detector, a feature I'd never known to be used. It's self activated. The cute little rainbow dial had all, always been implanted firmly in green. In the, it was still there but edging discreetly towards the yellow. <coughs> ah, sorry. I couldn't just stand that upset. I had a long, long, long been the door to a simple apple cellar for the rest of my life. Well, I could, but it would be relatively short and miserable life. A realization was dawning on me. With so many directions to go, what is the likelihood that I could choose a path the velvet remedy followed? Even though she only had a few hours a head start, she, the prospects of finding her were bleak. But I had to start somewhere, and the best chance I had was to get it up high and have a look at, around. You know, the ruins, the ruins near me rose, was higher than any of the nearby trees, and the sheared-off roof of its upper tower was possibly the best vantage point I could hope for. I closed my eyes steadied myself, and went inside. What was left of Sweet Apple Acres, of the Sweet Apple Acres building, poor, proved sturdier than it looked or sounded. It also almost barren. Anything of value and survived had been looted, leaving only scalps that nobody wanted, it, but time left itself sink and unable to erase. Rusted shoes, pockets. it, uh, soap for cleaning dresses that no longer existed, a pitchfork in it with a shattered handle, a rake. I began upstairs, my eyes alerted me to the feeble glow of soft green color of a po poisoned apple while oh, bathing her above, up in the room above. The glow okay, came from the screen of the, an old terminal, a device of arcane science identical to the ones you start stable too. It seemed miraculous that it still worked after centuries outside. While stable to it built some things, they were built to last. Well, when stable to built some things, it's built to last. Curiosity lured me, and my wonder was quickly replaced with understanding. I had no a coincidence that a particular term was live. Or, or on, I was the first message was to any pony. He just left stable too in search for me. Please go home. I am doing what I have to do. The overmare understands, even if she never, she can never agree, and I hope, hope that one day you will too. I will not I'll be back. Do not look for me. Do not endanger yourself of any further for my sake. Please forgive me. Velvet Remedy. I searched the terminal for more, but all the other messages were ancient and corrupted, save for one. And that was a rather unique encryption, something you know, I heard of and never seen before. A binary encryption such, such that 
that the or in order to encrypt it, I would at first have to download the message into my tip bug from both the term uh, from both the terminal which it and used to send it and the one and upon which it was received. And a thing better to do with the vast amounts of storage my tip bug was capable of, I downloaded it. In reality I knew the chance is that I would ever come across the companion terrible terminal much less it would it be functional or overwhelmingly against me, nor did I have any reason to believe such a message centuries old would be of any significance. But more importantly, I now face that at the outside was my new home. Even if I found a remedy, it was unlikely she would accompany me back. I'll admit I had been considerably entertaining the fantasy that the overmarried beast would alight with the remedies return that she would embrace us both back back into the herd. They viewed as only a party. And I was forced to admit the as a how foolish that vision was. I th thinking upon what had filled my head filled with black clouds that reached the top of the ruins and looked down the wasteland. And a bright light, feeble as it was, flickered in the darkness, just as the light from the camp and fire in our hour trot distance po poked an orange hole in the night. As I approached the a circle of light, I knew something was off. Something about the way the dusty bent in unicorn was laying on his mat of straw, legs curled up under him, some tenseness in his body language. It, but it wasn't until I stepped a hoof in the light I didn't get a good look. A warm hello dying on my lips. I saw he was gagged and caught on the glint of flames against the few exposed links of the chains binding his hooves. Well, look at here. Ear walked up all nice and pleasant, did she? A large earth pony emerged from the shadows of a nearby rock. His hooves clacked metallically against the rocky ground. Should, uh, uh, should in, excuse me. Should, I can't pronounce the word. S H O D, whatever it is. In cruelly spiked pony shoes. Two more ponies slid off opposite sides, one another earth ponies holding shovels whose blades have been lethally sharpened, and another unicorn whose glowing horn levitated it towards me. Yeah, sure. Or an instrument of wood and metal, all with two barrels. Each pony was he wore or arting made of thick hide, much like night. I had never seen in a firearm before, saved from pictures and books. Those books were more explicit enough for me to recognize the mortal threat. The bound unicorn on the mat shook his head with a sad yet a desertive look and began and trying to scrape and gag it, egg away with his forehoof, no longer making an effort to keep the chain secret. That the three ponies menacing, menacing me spared him only an occasional glance. Might as well, well trust yourself up for us. Us, the gun wielding unicorn snickered, then addressing me. You wouldn't mind, would you? Laughter, er, and another unicorn too. Show for that's a pretty price, this one. That's a pretty price. For what? For whom? The one holding the shovel spear in his mouth mumbled something incomprehensible, then apparently deciding the gun would, as a sufficient deterrent, spat out the weapon and reiterated. By the go, I mean, look at her. I think she's taking a bath. I was suddenly e e and bizarrely aware of how filthy the four ponies were, and how foul they smelled. I managed to cover a gag with a sneeze. What's going on? I asked. I asked of a motion batting a super embassy in my head and confusion and claw on its way to victory. The captive unicorn finally seemed to pull the gag free. They're slavers, you idiot! 